Greetings to all of you. My dear brothers and sisters and my dear friends. Today we start our second appendix and we're going to talk about the training for the third eye. But first let us pray. Let us come to the quietness in the busyness that is going on in our life. Let us enjoy us the music that we hear now of the Native American flute. And just be quiet. Ease your mind. My beloved Father, Let us come to a quiet moment with you. In a few minutes, we're going to talk a little bit about the training of the third eye. And help us to see with the insight of your Holy Spirit further than we can see our reality. Let us gaze in that we will come to see the beauty of yourself. View in our life where we have to stop and change where we have to hold back because we are important for you as much we are important for one another. And if we forget about ourselves, we will never get it. Help us to see ourselves as we are and what can be changed. We ask that through Christ. Amen. The lamp of the body is the eye. The ego self is the unobserved self. If you do not find an object, objective standing point from which to look back at yourself, you will almost always be egocentric. I'm going to read that again. The ego self is the un observed self if you do not find an objective standing point from which to look back at yourself you will almost be egocentric identified with yourself instead of in relationship to yourself Most of us have been given no training or practice in this because we thought it was all negative self-criticism instead of calm self 
observation, moral examination of conscience instead of ex examination, ex examination of the consciousness. I will say that again. Most of us have been given no training or practice in this because we thought it was all negative self-criticism instead of calm self-observation moral examination of conscious instead of examination of the consciousness ego is not bad it is just what takes over when you do not see truthfully and completely that lamp does not illuminate things well much of the early works of contemplation is finding that stance and learning how to return there in all moments of emotional turmoil positive as much as negative until you can eventually live more and more of your life there you will find yourself smiling sighing and weeping at yourself more than either hating or congratulating yourself which of themselves are both ego needs eventually you will discover a detached place of quiet self observation It must be without moral judgment or you will tire off it and rebel against it. It must be compassionate and calmly objective. It names the moment for what it is. It names my reaction without a need to praise or blame it just sees it to see my reaction for what it is it takes away this reaction's addictive and self-serving character it deflates my reaction and this empowers it from possessing me Now I have a feeling instead of a feeling having me. It maintains the good sense of I, but without ego attachment. It actually fosters much deeper, broader, more honest feelings. It also gives me a, sen- a strong sense of I, because there is now no need to totally eliminate or deny the negative part my full self is accepted ironically the truly destructive part of the negative is exposed and falls away as now unnecessary to see the negative is to defeat it for evil relies upon denial and discuss or disguise sorry the christian name for the stable witness is the holy spirit already in place and doing all the giving 
filling in all the gaps. Already compassionate and more merciful than we are. Never demanding the perfection of any technique, practice or asceticism. The word is asceticism. Only one only needs to constantly connect with our deepest level of desiring, which paradoxically is much harder than mere willpower and technique. The spirit bears common witness with our spirit that we are indeed the children of God. You can read that in the letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 16. It is a common knowing, a participative event, and feels like you are being knowing true, but with total acceptance and forgiveness. This will change your life. You will then know as fully as you are known. You can read that in the letter to the Corinthians, the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 12. The Spirit bears common witness with our spirit that we are indeed children of God. The lamp of the body is the eye. The spirit bears common witness with our spirit that we are indeed children of God. My dear ones, The most important place for us is to be so close to God in everything that we are doing. It is in our doing the dishes. It is in our going to our job, being a secretary or a manager or a pastor or a lay person who is doing a lot in church or communities or our children. It is in every part that our relations lies in God, has to be connected in God. It is our life. The Holy Spirit is always available because the gift is already given. God is wait, always waiting. God is always longing because we are His children. Never forget that. He will never, never, even in our deepest despair, even if we are lack of hope, lack of trust, God will never abandon us. And His Holy Spirit is given to us. Open your hearts and mind for Him. Open your ears and eyes.
He loves you guys. May the Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May you find peace within. May you gaze in that is beyond that you already see now in your reality. There is more. Don't be afraid to come in your quietness. Don't be afraid to look at yourself who you really are. And don't be disappointed. There is no judgment. There is only love. Only love and acceptance by God. And He will lead us in our new journey or in our journey that we are walking. Trust in your shepherd. Trust in your beloved spouse. You have a wonderful day, wherever you are. And remember, I love you guys. Blessings to all. Pastor Yeti. Bye.